Are you just the ultimate woman hater or just what? Man's best friend may be a man, a uh, dog, but uh, a boy's best friend is a cougar. Women are the biggest snakes there are, so you might as well get what you can and get rid of them before you get bit. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimension of underwear, and I want to pull it off. I already got a best friend. She listens, does what I say, doesn't talk back, doesn't use the restroom. She's man's best friend. A dog. Oh, and well, she is a bitch. Yeah, she's a bitch. My whole family listens to your show, including both my parents and my older brothers. And it's uh, it's funny because every time I'm with a girl and my mom hears about it, she goes, you don't know these women. I listen to Tom Likas. Be careful. I know how these women are. I'm like, Mom, I listen to Tom Likas too. Don't worry about it. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. Yeah. I don't want to offend them in any way. I am actually very angry with myself. Why? Because... Although I think you are perhaps the rudest and most twisted man I have ever met, I am somehow unable to keep myself from listening to your radio show. I think one way to get women to lose weight would be to require Cinnabon locations to have, like, World News Tonight on or yeah, CNN. I think so. I mean, women would start losing on. weight in no time. I mean, that's what they need. Put, put like, presidential facts in every cup of haagen -Dazs. The more attractive a woman is, the less likely it is that she knows who's running for president. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never done uh, the kind of research you have, Tom, on this. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing in-the-field research. Yeah. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an amateur anthropologist. You have been, like my father, uh, you're an inspiration and encouragement to invest my money, save my money. And, you know, work for my future, and I, I appreciate what you say every day, man. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever, and then it occurred to me, why? You know, there's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right. Why waste your time on one girl? I think you should be syndicated. Women around the country need to hear what you're saying so they can open their eyes and understand how guys really feel. That's what I've been telling people at the network. I've been telling people we should be syndicated, and I would imagine my surprise when they told me I am syndicated. You are. That's what they told me. Why should anybody care if they're offended? Because, like, why should anyone be care if they're offended? Yeah, I, 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 you can't answer that question because you just keep wandering around and, uh, you know, repeating the question. You can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. Answer it now. Okay, you know, maybe I can answer that question. Thank you. You can't curse on a radio station. Okay. You can't I won't do curse. it, you filthy piece of trailer trash crap. You can't do it. Well, you resort women to trailer trash. I don't care what reason. Hey, by the way, I didn't move you to the trailer park, sweetheart. You moved yourself there. Of course. You and your husband, Always Baba, he us. moved you right in. From the back of the back lots of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. <laughs> I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And we are here with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, 
kick your ass the hell off the air. That's what we do. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Daniela on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Well, I just wanted to uh, agree with the statement that you made earlier that you did not agree that another Republican would get elected this year. Uh, but I am a very strong supporter of Ron Paul, who is unfortunately uh, on the Republican ticket. Uh, no, he's not on and, any ticket. Well, if he, well, I know that he will not get the nomination. No. And what my hope is is that he'll continue to run as an independent if that's... That's the best thing that could happen to Hillary Clinton, I'll tell you that. Well, I would be devastated if Hillary Clinton were to take office. I think she If would. Ron Paul runs as an independent against John McCain and Hillary Clinton, it's only going to make it easier for Hillary to win. You think he would? Do I think he'd run as an independent? No, I'm sorry. You said you think he would, would make it easier for Hillary Clinton to win? Oh, yeah. Well, I actually am really thinking that Obama is going to take it. Um, Why are you thinking that? Uh, well, you, just the general consensus that I'm getting, I live in Long Beach and work in downtown L.A. Uh, what, what The vibe that I'm picking up from people is that they're more rooting for Obama. Yeah, but do you read the polls? Uh, I honestly have not kept up on the polls. Well, you know, 40 million people live in California. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't live in Long Beach. Uh, they don't live in uh, Seal Beach. Right. Uh, they don't live in Palos Verdes. Uh, a lot of them live in places like Fresno, Bakersfield, etc. And but I've Reading. areas primarily Republican, anyways. Well, that, the <laughs> the point I'm making to you is. Oh, well, and not all of them. Sacramento is Democratic. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are Democrats in this state. Uh, the, the, the California is all over the world with 40 million people. It's not 40 million Republicans, you know? Right, right. But um, and the, the polls say, uh, not just in California, but in the other states on Super Tuesday, Hillary Clinton is leading everywhere. It's shameful, <laughs> I have to say. I have to say. Well, wow. you know, uh, you, so you can't base it on what your friends think. Right. Well, and it's not just that. But, no, you're right. I definitely have to be more informed. There's a lot to be informed on right now, you know. So, but, no, I just wanted to see what your opinion on Ron and Paul was in general. My opinion yeah. is that most people uh, consider him an oddball. He will never be the president of the United States, not ever. Not now and not ever. Because mm. every election has a crank like him, okay? Whether it's Ralph Nader or Ross Perot or Jesse Jackson, whoever. There's always some they, crank who has no chance of winning who comes in and upsets the apple cart. Are they always in it this long, though? Because Ron Paul is... Ralph Nader, Ralph Nader, candidate. Ralph Nader was in it all the way uh, several times. Ross Perot uh, ran as an independent. Yes, right. I was right around when I was starting to vote. Was oh. Ross Perot? So. All right. Well, he yeah. ran. He ran for president, didn't he? Yes, he did. As an independent. Right. And uh, Ralph Nader running for the reason you got George W. Bush is because Ralph Nader insisted on running for president. That's sad. It's true. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, that's definitely something for me to consider. It is something to consider. So, so uh, uh, to me, if Ron Paul ran as an independent, a vote for Ron Paul's a vote for Hillary Clinton because it's a vote that John McCain won't be getting. Right. Well, but see, I don't even feel like your traditional Republicans are the ones who are supporting Ron Paul. It's the ones who are more on the verge of libertarian. Well, there's a know? lot of there's a lot of traditional Republicans who don't support John McCain either. Right. 
Right. Right? Yeah. You know what happened to all the born again Christian groups and stuff? They're, you think they're big McCain supporters? I, are they? Divorced, didn't they? Married a trophy wife, didn't they? Right, right, right. Et cetera? Yeah. Wow. And he's not a lockstep conservative either. No. No. Ah. Anyways, Tom, thank you so much for your opinion. You're awesome, and I appreciate I ride the train every day listening to you, and it's always a good hour. So I love that. Thank you so much. Have thank a great you. weekend. Appreciate the call. Another edition of Chicks on Politics. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Sam. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm really excited about the Lakers news. I think every Laker fan is excited about the Laker trade today. Bring the championship where it belongs. Yes, I I, I don't know if they're more excited about getting Paul Gasol or getting rid of Kwame Brown. I don't know oh, which yeah. one. Oh yeah, tell me about it. I want to play against uh, against that guy. That guy sucks. He shouldn't be in the NBA. Yeah, that should be an interesting game. The first game against Memphis uh, after this trade. Yep, yep. So what do you think about, uh, since we're getting another All-Star, what do you think about Kobe Bryant losing his chance of getting the first-time MVP? I think he's the greatest player ever, better than Michael Jordan, his offensive skills and the way his defensive skills are. So what do you think about his chances of lowering his chances for MVP since we're getting another All-Star? People start saying, oh, well, he has another All-Star. Well, I, I, Paul Gasol's just getting here. I think there's a lot of, <laughs> frankly, I think there's a lot of basketball fans who don't even know who he is. Well, yes, because he's been playing guy. in Memphis. He's a guy. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, he, he won the uh, Europe MVP until he broke his leg. He was a crazy player over there. Yeah, no, that's true. But and, uh, but no, I, I you know I, I think Kobe Bryant has a very good chance of being the MVP of the league. Uh, but of course, there are other great players and other great teams. Like I know, like Chris Paul, I think is going to get like Steve Nash got back to back. Yeah, that could happen. So, and of course, and about uh, well, how about the how about the season Kevin Garnett's having in Boston? Well, he has another two more All Stars with him. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, just because of the record, he, he cannot just get it. He's like, if you look at his numbers, he's like 198 guy. I know it brings a lot to the defense, but he's 198 guy, and 198 should, shouldn't get MVP when you have two more All Stars. Yeah, well, again, I, you know, the the biggest thing for me is not who's going to be MVP, it's who's going to win the championship. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I just, I just a big-time Kobe fan. I just hated I, that. He's, he's one of the greatest players, if not the well, great. For me, he's the great. And then he's, he's been in the league 13 years. I, 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 I would much rather see Kobe Bryant win a championship than MVP. Yeah, me too. As a Laker fan. Of course. It does us no good when he scores 81 points and the team gets knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Another thing about the Jason Kidd deal, I will never give up uh, uh, the Parker. No, uh, Farmer, John Farmer, I will never give up him. He, he's going to be one of the best uh, point guards. Like in I, I, think, I think he's had an incredible year, and I think he's only going to get better. I will give I will give up Sasha if they need point. If they don't need point guard or guard, I'll give Vladi. If that's another guy, I would like to get rid of five million dollar waste of money. Rodmanovich, yeah, yeah, he's waste of money. He's not going to be playing much yeah. after Ariza gets back. Well, uh, in fact, he hasn't really played that much this season, has he? He's been injured. He's, he's, right. I think he wants to change his career. He's going to be, I don't know, he's going to go to the small. I don't know what he's going to do about it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for that, sir. Tell you what, let's turn it into sports talk over here. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Uh, great day for Los Angeles Laker fans, and a lousy day for everybody else in the Western Conference of the NBA because uh, the Lakers just became powerhouse today. I think. Tom Likas one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six 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 Tom. You are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM.
Steve Futterman is at the Super Bowl in Gladale, Arizona. We'll talk to him in one moment. Let me get one call on here before we get to Steve. Melissa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Melissa. I am totally in love with you, Tom, but I am not in love with you today. I am so outraged that you are saying that Obama cannot win. I disagree with that. I think he can totally win. He has closed the gap so far between himself and Hillary on the polls. And and if you're basing your your uh, your theory on the polls, I mean, Iowa showed that Hillary was going to win, and that's not the case. Well, first of all, when you're talking about Iowa, you're talking about a very small sample size. Right. We're talking about a number of states. And on top of that, uh, I'm not just basing this on the polls. I'm basing it on my knowledge of this country, which I believe to be a racist country. Um, you know, it's one thing if Barack Obama managed to beat Hillary Clinton, but then Barack Obama would have to beat the Republican Party and the kind of people who vote Republican. Right. But in Iowa, the majority was white. There's hardly any. Uh, if you look at the population in Iowa, there are hardly any African-Americans there. And he did get the majority vo vote there. But if you look but at Iowa it, is you, tiny. OK, well, all right. OK, so that's fine. But look also at the at the number. Name of a big name. That, one big state where Obama has won with a majority of white voters. Well, there's only been four states. Name one big state. How about Florida? Florida? Nobody campaigned in Florida. Hillary Clinton went to Florida to to appear as if she'd won. They did not campaign. And another thing about Florida... But they still voted? Well, yes, but listen to this. 100% of the people know that are registered to vote know the name of Hillary Clinton. Obama has to try and beat through, uh, through that, and he did. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I think that he did pretty well, considering that he did not campaign there, and Hillary Clinton is so popular and so well known. I think he did amazing, and so they. Did but but even so, again, I, look, we're talking to apples and oranges here. Uh, it is possible for Obama to win the Democratic nomination. It I never said that. Possible. I never said that's not possible. I'm saying in this country. When he'd be voted for by Republicans, Democrats, independents, libertarians, and whatever, uh, I do believe that uh, this country in the end will not, at this time, I, I vote for a black man yeah. unless he is a Republican conservative. I disagree. Edwards just dropped out of the race. He's a white white uh, Democrat. He's the perfect example of a of a president that our country is so stereotypical of. I mean, we he what? would have been the perfect candidate, and he dropped out because nobody voted. For he didn't have the momentum that Obama has. Well, frankly, I think nobody voted for John Edwards because the focus of his campaign uh, was people who are not likely to vote, people in poverty. Right, but if you're talking about a racist country, well, then I don't care about the issues. I'm just going to vote for the white guy that's running. I'm not going to vote for... I, I, don't, I don't think Iowa is particularly racist, but I do think you get to some parts of this country where they're going to see a black I, man I up agree. there and they're going to say no. Well, I agree with that. I agree. But I think that if Hillary Clinton runs and she wins, I think she will have a harder time having to beat the Republicans because she is a woman and she has so much trash to have to beat past. And Obama is a fresh face. I, the, the Republicans were not ready for Obama to run. They don't have anything against him. When they talk about uh, when they're debating, they always talk about Clinton. They can never say anything about Obama. There is there is no way. And you can't tell me that the numbers of voters that are out there turning the up stuff people numbers, say against you doesn't make any difference. People said stuff against Bill Clinton every day for eight years. Right for eight years, the guy was was the most popular president since Reagan, and he was reelected. And so the fact that people say something against Hillary Clinton has nothing to do with whether she can win. No, I don't think so. You know what? The thing is that I've spoken to Republicans, and, and every Republican that I have spoken to has said, you know what? I don't know much about Obama. I don't really care. But when it comes to Clinton, they'll they'll do anything. They will come out and vote against her just to come out and vote against her because they don't like her they know her already they know her policy they don't like her she does not have a chance to i win. don't like and her i, I don't I like know. but don't I'm say but say but i said i said that i won't because i want the war in iraq and i won't vote for any republican right 
but that's that's you. And and the thing is that a lot of people feel the same way. And the people want the vo- the war to end. They don't care black, white, Latino, whatever. They'll vote. But and but I- here's the thing. I'm not convinced. I'm uh, and this plays to what you're saying. I'm not convinced Hillary Clinton will end the war either. No, I don't. I know she won't end the war. She voted for it. No. That, that's and that's what Obama is saying. Uh, by yeah. the way, if if I were a Democrat, which I'm not, uh, and if I were voting in the Democratic primary, which I'm not, um, I would vote for Obama. I would vote for him, but I don't think he could win. I I think he can, and I I I do because um, I just I think with the momentum that he has uh, and the amount of people, but I don't think he has momentum. The the, the South Carolina where he won. The only uh, demographic cell where he won with white people were people under 30. He lost with white people from 31 to death. Right, but those are the biggest turnout. That was the biggest turnout. Either way, it doesn't matter who, which the... De- that was the biggest turnout in South Carolina. I'm right. telling you that older white people will look at Barack Obama and say, black guy, liberal black guy. But they're coming uh-uh. out and voting. How, how do you explain that? They're coming out and they are voting for him. Ted Kennedy is an older white man. He came out and supported him. By the way, nobody likes Ted Kennedy outside of Massachusetts. And well, even in Massachusetts, you know they complain about him all the time. The thing is, it doesn't matter. Nobody really cares what... You know what? Nobody cares who Ted Kennedy's endorsing. No, cares. It, it's, it's true, but I'm not talking about his likability. I'm just telling you he's an older white man. You're saying an older white man... No, we're not talking man. about politicians. I'm talking about the average voter. It doesn't matter. He's a, he's a person. I mean, okay, if you're talking about the average voter, I can give you, I can, I know a lot of people. Well, David Geffen now is supporting Barack Obama. So what? I'm talking, in, in, do you understand the difference between talking about an individual and talking about millions of people and extrapolating you. over a large group? You know, Obama, I'll tell you something else. Obama has raised most of his money, has raised actually all of his money from and uh, whereas Hillary Clinton... Uh, uh, yeah, well, Howard Dean money. raised a lot of money, too. Where is he now? Well, he made oh, about close to $100 million. Last month alone, he made $32 million. Where uh, is Howard Dean now? Where, I don't know where Howard Dean is. Well, but I know that for, do you remember yeah. when people like you were calling talk shows and saying, oh, yeah, Howard Dean for president, he's going to be the president, Howard Dean, he's going to be the man, Howard Dean. And the, the same thing happened to Howard Dean's going to happen to Barack Obama. Howard Dean had a different thing going on. He had his little genomites or whatever he called them. I don't know what it was, but that was a totally different thing. With what, Barack- do, what, what do you mean it's a totally different thing? I mean, again, I I think you have to look at the bigger picture. And when Barack Obama, when Barack Obama meets white people in Alabama and Mississippi and places like that, I'm telling you, uh, they're going to reject him out of hand. I don't think so. Black people were endorsing Clinton before they were endorsing Obama. Obama has just recently closed that gap. He is closing... But just a month, not, not even a month, two weeks ago, I don't know the exact numbers, the exact figures, but I know that here in California, she was leading him by 20%, something like that. And uh, about a couple of days ago... We're not closed- talking about whether he can win the nomination. I think he has a chance of winning the nomination. We're talking about whether he can be president. And I'm telling you, even if he wins the nomination like you say he will, I don't think he will win in a general election. Now listen to this. If you if you are a racist person, you probably will not go out and vote for a woman, and you probably will not go out and vote for a black man. So how then do you explain such a record turnout? Again, right now, the Democrats are running against each other. But it's still a They have turnout. not had to face independents and Republicans. Primaries. This is not the actual. Election. I know, darling. Who do you think you're talking to here? Of course, we're not. The point I'm making to you is winning the primary tells you nothing about whether somebody can win the election. It tells you nothing. Brought out so many people. He will bring out even more during the general election. Uh, uh, I heard this about Al Gore and John Kerry and and Michael Dukakis and every other Democratic loser over the years. Come on. Well, might have, but they didn't have record numbers of turnout people. They didn't raise. Oh, Howard Dean raised record uh, amounts at that time, the most ever raised. And they were talking about how he had mastered the Internet. And he was the first politician to harness the power of the Internet. Blah, blah, blah.
Howard Dean is not Barack Obama. Howard Dean is just the well, white guy that he's, ran. He's Howard so Dean far. But Dean. I'm telling you, Dean is not running he will be this year's Howard Dean when it's all over. That's what I'm saying. Well, Howard it ran at a different time when our country was in a different state. It was not that long ago. It still wasn't it's the state that it is today. <sighs> And the majority, I don't know, I just, I just don't agree with you today. Well, I know and you I don't agree you know. with me, and you don't agree with all the polls, and yeah. you don't agree with uh, all the pundits. I, I agree with the polls. I do agree with the polls. Hillary and, uh, Clinton has a strong lead over Obama in most of the states on Super Tuesday. Period. Not on all of them. I didn't say all of them. I said most of them. Well, what to you is most? Well, put it this way. If Hillary Clinton wins most of the primaries on Tuesday, it's pretty much over. And if Obama wins, it's pretty much over, which he is. He's ahead of her in delegates. In 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 what state? In Nevada, he's ahead of her. Even though he lost the popular vote, he won the super, the delegate there. He won the delegate, the delegate. in Iowa and the delegates in, in New Hampshire. He's ahead Name of her. a big state that he's won. That he's he's won the delegates. He's ahead of her by a delegates. big state. Because we, how many big states have we had? He didn't win in Florida. He didn't win in. I can if South. He didn't win in Florida because nobody campaigned in Florida. That wasn't it. It didn't get to the state to run it. Well, Hillary Clinton didn't campaign either, and she won. Because everybody knows her. She's she's got win. I don't care what the reason is. You know, again, why do the polls say that uh, Obama's going to lose in all these places? Why did the polls say that Hillary was going to win in o Iowa? That's one state. That's one state, but that happened. With a very state. small sample size, a very small group of people. I know as a woman, understanding mathematics is challenging for you. But but the small sample size to, to survey one small, sparsely populated state is going to have wacky results as opposed to big states like California. Like well, Tom, I'll give Michigan. you I'll tell you something else. I know I know the way you are, but uh I'm actually a math teacher, but let me tell you something else. In uh, New Hampshire, in New Hampshire, in another way, they said, oh, well, uh, here, Obama is going to win. Everybody said Obama was going to win, and he didn't. You can never trust the polls. Well, you're all he over the road win. here, but you're all over the road here. I mean, uh, uh, Obama lost to New Hampshire. I mean, he won in Iowa, he lost to New Hampshire. Oh, by the way, New Hampshire, are there any black people in New Hampshire? Are there any? No. There are not black people, and you're saying. Bunch of cranky old white people. Huh? You're saying. You're saying, no, they're not black people there, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He wanted Iowa. It doesn't matter? That's like saying, you know what, New Hampshire is like... Oh, he didn't home. want New Hampshire, so therefore it doesn't matter. He did want New Hampshire, but he's <laughs> delegates. He's ahead in delegates. How many delegates are there so far? That's why they call it Super Tuesday. Well, of course it's Super Tuesday, but they haven't even had Super Tuesday yet. So it's coming you... in three days, four days. Tell me that you don't even know if, if that that you know that Obama is not going to win when they haven't even had Super Tuesday yet. I didn't say I know that. I said in this conversation, it's possible he would win the nomination. I said that. So now she has won two states. He has won two states, and that's it. You can Ooh. never account for it. Ah. And he's not do that. All right, we're gonna find out, and you'll you'll of course be hiding under the bed uh, yeah, when when I'll you call you back when this when when they, when you win. All right, we'll see if that's true. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with Steve Futterman, coming to you from the Super Bowl. Up next, Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas, Likas. Like Do you teach the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Joining us. From the Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Can I say Super Bowl? Are we licensed to say Super Bowl on the air? I'm going to say it. I want to risk the wrath of the NFL. From the Super Bowl, also known as the big game in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, we have with us on the line uh, 
I think he's the chief blogger for the CBS Radio News website. Uh, it's Steve Futterman. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, no, I'm I'm a correspondent now with CBS. Oh, you're a correspondent? Yeah, a correspondent. Ah. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah, they they gave me that title. That's pretty good to well, go from uh, blogger to correspondent. They, they they say it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, this internet stuff uh, really is helping careers. It's amazing. It's remarkable. Unreal. And you know, I I thank I thank uh, you know my lucky stars. I'm, I'm I'm sure you do. Yeah, every night. Now here you are at the Super Bowl. Of course, anybody who's ever spent any time in Arizona knows uh, there's nothing going on in Glendale, Arizona this time of day except maybe a little rush hour traffic. But uh, there's no night spots. There's nothing going on. So where are you actually? Well, I'm in Phoenix. Uh, you there know, we go. The, the, this is the Phoenix metropolitan area. Yeah, Glendale, they're trying to build stuff up there. I think there are a couple hotels there now. The things are building up there. Eventually they'll uh, fill it up and uh, they'll try to get some places. But, it, but it's pretty much in the suburbs of Phoenix, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, everybody is about uh, uh, 20 to 30 minutes away in downtown Phoenix. Yep. Downtown Phoenix is where the, uh, if you want to call it the action is. And then Scottsdale, other areas that are well built up. Yes, I understand. So uh, it's just the usual uh, pregame nonsense, I see. Uh, I saw Media Day on TV. That was preposterous. You see the uh, woman propose to uh, Tom Brady and uh, Eli Manning? Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, there was a piece of the L.A. Times by uh, a uh, reporter of Mexican descent, yeah. Uh, who was uh, very upset about that, said that uh, Mexican reporters uh, now will not be taken seriously uh, again because of, of stunts like this. You know, the, the media did. I don't know what her uh, situation was. Uh, she was with a Spanish language station. I don't know if it was from Mexico or. Yeah, it's, from, the... it's, from, it's from Mexico, uh, TV Azteca. Okay. But, uh, you know, Media Day is sort of an unusual day. You you have the real reporters, and then you have the people who not, are not necessarily real reporters, sort of fringe reporters, people who are on the air. Just because you're on the air doesn't mean you're a reporter. But the NFL, very wisely, you know, they, they market this stuff so well. They basically let many people in who would not get a normal credential for the game, but they get the publicity on, on the Tuesday of Media Day, and it's, it's all part of the buildup. Wow. Now, uh, Phoenix, uh, I lived in Phoenix for three years. I worked yeah. on the radio there. They talk about you still here. Yeah, and uh, it, it generally a kind of a sleepy community most of the time. Uh, for a city that big, uh, it can be kind of, uh, well, quiet. Boring? I'd say. Yeah. Not like uh, New York. Uh, I still think San Diego is the best place to have a Super Bowl. They have that downtown gas lamp district. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's and, my... and, and water. Yep. San Diego is my favorite spot for the Super Bowl, I think. Well, uh, if you're lucky, they'll have it there again. Yeah. Uh, will they ever do it in New Orleans again? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I mean, New Orleans is part of the mix. Next year, it's in Tampa. The year after that, it's back in Miami. So two straight years in Florida. Florida is where they have it uh, most often. They have it in Tampa. They have it in Miami. They did that one time in Jacksonville. Don't know if they'll go back there again. Lots of complaints from the uh, news media. Lack of hotels. There was a big lack of hotels there. Lack of a lot of things. Kind of like where you are now. Yeah. Sir, I feel like I'm in Jacksonville. Look at well. <laughs> at least Jacksonville has water. Yeah, they don't have much water here. No beach here. Uh, the water is in your glass, and you have I to see. ask for it. You have to ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. The drought conditions. That's exactly right. So, uh, what about Sheriff Joe Arpaio? Uh, is he uh, uh, gearing up for this? Haven't seen him. Uh, the last time I uh, had any uh, dealings with him is when they were having that Mike Tyson uh, trial uh, possibility. And uh, he wanted he, he offered uh, Mike Tyson a chance to go to uh, jail. You know, there there are outdoor jails here. What do they call them? Tent that, City. That, that little work camp they have. Tent City, they call Tent it. Tent City, yeah. And that's where the uh, prisoners wear pink. Yes, yes. He's quite uh, one of the big big uh, personalities here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Oh yes, yes. He believes in severe punishment. I'm sure they'll have the buses. They'll have buses waiting to take uh, b uh, buses filled with uh, with new occupants uh, away from the Super Bowl. I might be a good story on Monday. Maybe so. Uh, are there any good stories? I mean, uh, <laughs> two weeks of trying to fill. I don't know how you do it, oh, Steve. Come on, it's history. 
They're trying to make history. The, the <laughs> Patriots are trying to do something no team's ever done, Tom. You know that. Yeah, but they're not going to do that till Sunday. And in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of, um, well, time killed. Well, that's the countdown to history. History? Yeah, 48 hours till history. Ooh. In fact, around 48 hours from now, Tom... Around this time, oh, uh, that, hours from now. That's exactly the, right. The, the, the clock may be ticking away, and we may uh, be talking about uh, uh, this this team that has become a dynasty and in the National Football League doing something no NFL team has ever done, winning 19 games in one year. That's exactly right. No NFL team has ever done. I'm going to write this down. This, I might use this on Sunday. Oh, very good. Yeah. Now, what about that no Plaxico character? Has, has he been uh, uh, right. shoot, uh, that Plaxico character on the Giants? Is Plax he shooting his mouth? Burris. Yeah, is he shooting his mouth off now? You know, he, I was around when he was doing that. He didn't. You know, there are different ways to uh, predict victory, and he didn't seem to be doing it uh, like it's in your face. He just said that's just a feeling he had. And uh, I, I, again, I've been around some of these athletes who make the prediction, and lots of bravado. He did it in a very I guess you don't do it in a quiet way, but it wasn't like in your face, we'll show you. Just said that's what his feeling was, that they were going to win, and he gave the score. Has he looked at the average score of the New England Patriots this season of any given game? I'm sure they all know the scores. They're a good team. The uh, Patriots beat the Giants during the regular season this yeah, year. They after played. Fa after falling behind, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're obviously the favorites. They're obviously the favorites. And uh, is there any other craziness? Arizona is known for being a little kooky. Well, I'm wondering if Mike Tyson's in town. That's a good question. Yeah. That, uh, that could be fun. That could be another news story tonight. All that's missing is Britney Spears. Yeah. She's not down here, I don't think. No. I don't. I think she's in Los Angeles now. I, th I, I think she's in the hospital again. Yep, yep. Unbelievable. And, uh, and her father got... Uh, with some uh, some uh, legal uh, rights to handle her affairs. So come on, this is just some big junket for you, right? You go there. There's not really much going on. I'm Ever working very. Tom, I, I was busy the last two days covering the debates. I had a six o'clock flight this morning. It's been tough for me today. You were covering the debate. Uh, which debates? Uh, both of them. The one in Simi Valley, uh, the Reagan Library, and then last night at the Kodak oh, so, Theater. So you flew back to California for that, and then yeah, you... I. Usually I stay down for all the Super Bowl week, but uh, this week, because of Super Tuesday, I had to cut back on my coverage of Super Sunday. I, I came back to L.A. on when Tuesday, covered debates Wednesday, Thursday, and then back to uh, football today. Wow. And you'll be covering Super Tuesday as well? Yes. Mm. And uh, be, what, what do you think? What, they'll be calling upon Tuesday? you for your expert opinion? I'm sorry? They'll be calling upon you at... CBS Radio for your expert opinion? I don't know if they would call it expert opinion, but they will be calling on me, yes. <laughs> to get I, I don't think they're going to call it expert opinion, though. To get sandwiches for Dan Revive? What? Well, Dan, Dan, Dan's a very good, good, good friend of mine. <laughs> I'd get sandwiches for him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. I'd give him coffee. <laughs> Dan's a very nice guy. He's, he's helped me in my career. <laughs> oh, you know what I want to play for you before right. I let you go? Right. Uh, there was a newscast. This was on the Fox News. Do we I've still have it. that? I've heard it. You heard it? Yeah. What would you think about that? Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a friend of mine. I, I worked with him a long time ago. He's a great guy. Bill Vitka. Things happen. <laughs> they do? Has that ever happened to you? Not quite that. I've had, I've had things that were a couple things where things just do not go right. Not exactly sounding quite like that, but uh, not that far away from that. Oh, wait. This just in. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Come on, that's good. There, but for the grace of God, right? Hey, you know what? Uh, if I ever came in here and started shuffling through papers... I'd never get away with that. Um, oh, I am. a great guy. Do you have a prediction for Sunday? Real quick? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're Patriots, of course. The Tom Likas Show.